me. We're pleased to welcome Maurice Opsfeld, Economic Counselor and Director of the Research Department at the International Monetary Fund. I'm going to get uh, straight to it, Mr. Opsfeld. At the start of 2016, the IMF pegged global growth at 3.4% um, for 2016 and 3.6% for 2017. What, in your opinion, are the risks to the downside and to the upside? There are a number of risks out there, uh, and unfortunately the, the upside risks seem to be outweighed by the downside risks. Uh, probably the biggest downside risk is the threat of uh, renewed financial market volatility, which could have a negative effect on emerging markets, uh, spilling over to them in a way that is harmful. Uh, there are some upsides, though. Uh, it could be that the prolonged fall in the price of commodities, especially oil, will feed through more to consumption in the importing countries. Okay, fair enough. You've summarized uh, the risk to the downside and acknowledged that those on the downside are more than the upside. Let's look at it region by region. And I'm going to start with the United States. One adjective that is used to describe the recovery in the U.S. is, you know, the term patchy. Does that resonate with you? There may have been a soft patch in the last quarter of uh, 2015. I think uh, growth remains reasonable in the U.S., but we haven't seen any accelerating momentum as we might have hoped. Uh, but uh, patchy, I think, would, 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 not, would not describe it for me. Uh, subdued, maybe. Subdued it is then. I'm going to switch to the Eurozone. It seems perhaps a cyclical recovery is beginning to take place, but the structural issues persist. But uh, I'm going to leave you to describe the Eurozone's economic outlook. I mean, it looks like the Eurozone may be losing some momentum, and we've certainly seen downside pressures on, uh, on inflation. I think the very vigorous uh, set of measures the ECB rolled out last week are a testament to the fact that they're worried about uh, somewhat slowing growth and uh, uh, possibly greater deflation threats as well. What about China? What are you expecting out of that to Behemoth? Well, the Chinese government is uh, uh, promising a uh, target growth rate of 6.5 to 7 percent over the coming year. Uh, I think they have the policy tools to, to reach that. Uh, we in the fund think that a somewhat less ambitious growth rate, uh, something more like 6 to 6.5, would be safer because we're concerned not only about the quantity of growth, but about the quality of growth. Uh, we wouldn't want to see growth artificially boosted to meet an uh, overambitious target at the expense of macro stability down the road. And uh, there's certainly some uh, uh, reform challenges that China could undertake to make the economy more resilient and stronger on a sustained basis. Okay, China included the growth in the emerging market back seems to be slowing as a whole. And I'm referring to the, you know, 4% that we've seen in 2015 versus an average of 6.2% in the previous 10 years. I understand China has a big role to play, but what to your mind are the big causes for the slowdown in the emerging market pack? And what does it mean for 2016 and for the next year? I think we should recognize first that growth experience across the emerging world is incredibly diverse. You look at India, which our managing director has rightly called the bright spot. It's growing uh, at, a, at a very healthy rate and uh, uh, further structural reforms could allow it to attain even, even higher rates. Uh, but other countries are suffering and some are facing geopolitical pressures, some are facing uh, domestic political strife. And for many, many countries, the fall in commodity uh, prices, uh, notably oil, uh, for those that export it, has been a great blow. Uh, for those countries in particular, they will have to diversify their exports going forward. And that's not something that's going to happen overnight. So uh, I would say that for a broad class of countries, uh, there'll be a period of retrenchment. Okay, let's talk about India in greater detail. You refer to the IMF uh, chief's description of India as a bright spot. You also talked about, you know, potential levers for faster growth. Share your India outlook in greater detail. 
Well, India has uh, been a beneficiary of the uh, fall in commodity prices. Um, its oil imports are cheaper, and uh, the government has commendably been pushing forward a range of structural reforms, which Prime Minister Modi outlined uh, at his speech at our conference yesterday. But there's certainly room for more, uh, more in the labor market, um, uh, more working on supply bottlenecks, the food distribution system, uh, more work on uh, cleaning up non-performing loans uh, in the state-owned banking system. Uh, again, these, these could be viewed as opportunities. With, uh, with, uh, with success in these areas, India's growth rate could be even higher. Okay, but given the recent action by the government, including the tone set by the budget, would you say that the path is broadly correct? Uh, I, think, I think the path is, is broadly correct, but there is, again, room for, for more ambition. Um, the goods and services tax would put the budget on an even firmer basis and allow more infrastructure investment, which is uh, sorely needed. So the goods and services tax, a critical one. You've talked about, you know, how India could potentially grow faster. But on the flip side, what are the risks that you see to India's growth projections? Well, again, the one I mentioned before, financial market volatility. Uh, India would not necessarily be immune to that, even though it's in a relatively favorable position. Uh, reforms could stall, and that would be a downside risk facing India. So... Um, uh, these uh, these uh, possible obstacles are certainly out there. Okay, but that's a more uh, sort of that's a risk that applies to the world economy in general. Is there any other risk that you see specific to India? Well, I think I think we have to see if the political process in India will allow forms to reforms to keep their their momentum or not. And uh, you know, if not, I think that would be a risk. Okay, will the political process allow reforms to keep their momentum? The bad loans problem in the Indian banking system, there's been a fair bit of focus on that, including concerted action by the Reserve Bank of India. What's your assessment of the issue and the potential fallout? Well, I think the, the, the banking system in India is uh, fundamentally sound. But um, the presence of these non-performing loans, particularly in the, in the state banking sector, have had a dampening effect, uh, discouraging credit growth uh, to the to the real economy. Uh, so again, it's a for, it's a foregone opportunity. I think cleaning up this uh, uh, set of, uh, of non-performing assets would allow the banking sy system to uh, deliver credit where it is most useful in supporting growth. Finally, if I say Indian economy to you, what couple of words spring to your mind? Well, I would have to go back to bright spot, two other words. Uh, uh, you know, India is uh, uh, the, the fastest growing large economy in the world. And um, uh, uh, policies, uh, as I said, that, that, that address some, some of the structural issues would possibly allow it to grow even more quickly. Well, Maurice Opsfeld, thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure to have you on NDTV. A real pleasure.